It's a frightening reminder of the pace of Haiti's reconstruction and the fragility of everyday life in the earthquake ravaged nation. On Friday, a powerful storm slammed into Port-au-Prince. It wasn't a hurricane or a tropical storm, but it killed at least six people. It shredded one of the 10 cities that sprung up after the quake in January. Eight months after the quake, those makeshift shelters are still home to more than a million people. We have Imogen Wall on the phone this morning. She's the United Nations humanitarian spokesperson in Haiti. Imogen, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, three days now since that storm, and as you walk through the streets, what are you hearing? What are you seeing this morning? Well, mostly the streets are back to normal. The storm breakdown did bring down some trees, uh, but the, the, they, they've all been cleared now. So if you walk around Port-au-Prince, uh, you will see normal day-to-day -day life. In the camps, uh, it's a slightly different story. We've now identified 162 camps uh, that have humanitarian needs, as we call them, mostly shelter and the need for mitigation. That's, that means help with drainage. Most camps, uh, we're seeing not very high numbers of tents. There were a few that were badly affected, but the issue we've got is there's a lot of tent, a lot of, sorry, the issue we have is that there are a lot of camps affected. Some of them are reporting quite small needs. So it's, it's, they're spread across a very big area. The assessment numbers are still coming in, but that's what we're looking at at the moment. Uh, the good news is that uh, in, in the places where what we are seeing is that we've put a lot of work into mitigation. So obviously the rainy season has been upon us for some time, which means putting in canals and trenches and drainage systems into camps. And those seem to have worked in most of the places we've seen. Imogen, the face of this disaster so far seems to be the children. We know now that two children were killed in this storm. There's still a, a humanitarian crisis in this country, as you mentioned. What needs to happen next to further progression? Well, in the, we need to uh, finish the response to this storm, which we'll do in the coming days. We need to continue to look after people in the camps, those displaced by the earthquake. Uh, the reality is we will have camps here for some time, so those need to be supported. In the, in the meantime, we also need to continue contingency planning because, of course, we're not out of hurricane season yet, so there's still a big danger there. But at the same time, we also have to really get the next stage, which is technically called transition, which is when you're going into long-term reconstruction work. We really need to get that going. The biggest problem there has been uh, the lack of funding that's come through from donors, from governments mostly, uh, not the public. The public is extremely generous in the first days after this response. Uh, and the humanitarian operation has been built on the back of that. But to, to build what needs to be built in Haiti over the next five to ten years is going to take a lot. And that long-term aid, Imogen, we're eight months out of this earthquake. The question that, that many people will ask here this morning are why people still living in tents in this country? Well, it's, a, it's an understandable question, but I think if you were here, you'd understand the realities very quickly. I mean, the population we have in camps is, is roughly the equivalent to the population of Las Vegas. You're talking about building, rebuilding a city in a, in a country which had a completely inadequate building industry that had no seismic codes, for example, so we have to make sure that all that's put in place. That means the right materials, the right standards and materials. It means people trained to actually build according to those standards so we know those buildings are safe. Uh, and of course, it's not just houses. It's whole infrastructure, it's hospitals, it's prisons, it's schools, it's large buildings. And if you think about how long it would take even to build a hospital in America and multiply that across an entire city, you'll have some idea of what we're up against here in, in doing this. It is certainly an endeavor that is going to take a very long time uh, to even get to any achievable goal. Imogen Wall, a UN humanitarian spokesperson from Haiti this morning. Imogen, we really appreciate you joining us and best in your efforts. Thank you so much.